Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today we have another great guest on. And when it comes down to different changes and different things that happen in life and in your business, then a lot of times you ask the question, like, what happens if blank when blank? And, you know, there are a lot of things that you could consider, a lot of factors. Well, we decided to bring on a great guest that helps a lot of people in that area from whether it's estate planning, whether it's business planning, I mean, really helping you fill in that blank so that you can move forward in a very confident way. So definitely stay tuned for our amazing guests are today. So without further ado, let me bring on our amazing guest, John Strohmeyer. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, thanks for having me on, Terrell. Absolutely, absolutely. The pleasure is mine. Now, you know, I'm always interested when, you know, you get the chance to talk to, you know, legal professionals. Um, well, for two reasons. One is because I'm a CPA, for some reason, people think that I guess I can answer legal questions. And I'm like, those are two different fields, guys. Right. <laughs> Look, as a, as a tax attorney, I get a lot of questions where I say, I don't know if you can deduct. You probably can. Have you asked your CPA? Because I'm not signing the return. I don't honestly really care. <laughs> you know, like it, it's that's going to be your problem of whether or not they can actually deduct it. So, yeah, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> and then I think the other piece is I think there are so many different factors or so many different questions that people probably should be considering, whether it's estate planning, whether it's business planning, as they start, or whether it's trust, as they start to think about those things. So it's always good to, you know, have on legal professionals who can, at a minimum, just introduce people to, hey, here are some of the subject matters you probably may want to consider. So we'll definitely like dive into that a little bit more. But before we do that, Love to just share with us your background is kind of what was your first career like, like? Oh, yeah. And then how did that lead into what you're doing now? Yeah. So what I do now, I am the proprietor of Strohmeyer Law in Houston, Texas. I guide my clients through the maze of tax, estate planning, and probate law to help them leave no unfinished business. So it takes a lot of different forms. But it started after I got out of college, I worked for the Four Seasons Hotels for four years. And most of that, three years of that was in management. So I'd show up at the hotel at 11 o'clock at night. I'd leave about eight in the morning. So Tuesday through Saturday, I was at the hotel and I was left in charge. It was my hotel with a staff of about usually 13. We had to keep it the Four Seasons Hotel from 11 p.m. until 9 a.m., when we handed the keys over to the AM shift and it didn't turn into the two seasons hotel at 2 AM or 4 AM. It was, it had to be four seasons the entire time. And you just learned, you know, but that was a great thing. I wasn't just handed over like good luck. It was, how are we going to run this? How are we going to make sure it stays that way overnight? And we did, we got, it was great learning about it. Then I went to law school figured out I wanted to do tax and estate planning. And the nice thing has been being able to bring what I learned about client service from the hotel, where you and I as licensed professionals, we've got a little bit of a moat around what we do. It's protected us, you know, in somewhat intentionally insulated us from the market. But now, you know, though that's coming down. CPAs, at least here in Texas, you, you can have non-CPAs owning CPA firms. Uh, Texas doesn't allow non-lawyer ownership of law firms yet, but that's coming. And so, you know, as professionals, I'm thinking about how can we do that? But also, you know, for my clients, how do we take better care of them? How are we making sure that they're leaving no unfinished business? Nice, nice. I, I love it. I mean, and you know, it's one of those interesting things I always say, like I, I was talking, I forgot who I was talking to the other day. And I was like, you know, when it comes down to estate planning, it, it seems like there's this interesting dynamic of, you know, you're in an industry where people don't like to talk about death and they don't often like to plan ahead. So just right. like, do, do you find that to be the case in, you know, as you're working with people? Oh, absolutely. What, I mean, what 
I like to think about is, you know, clients are coming to us, they need some motivation. It's not like anybody who's coming in is going to be a great client, only because the work, there's no urgency to it, unless somebody's died or getting ready to die. Most of the time, people are like, yeah, you know, I'll get to it later. So we get we get a lot of leads where people have reached out and then they just drop off the map. So what I've done is just learned, you know, for my intake staff, we give people essentially three strikes only because we're going to say, look, you're going to have one call with me. We'll follow up in two weeks. Two weeks after that, we're just going to say, you know, strike three. We're taking you off our, off our radar. It doesn't mean we're taking you off the mailing list, but we just recognize sometimes people say, oh, you know, I'm interested in this only to find they're just, you know, they were kind of interested, but they're not really ready to move forward. And then it'll be, you know, six months, eight months later, they find that motivation again, and we're ready to go forward. But we as a business can't just sit there and you know, like, what about now? What about now? What about now? And, uh, and annoy them. You know, that that's very interesting because, you know, when you think about, you know, like I said, the business side of a law firm, I mean, it seems like, you know, that takes a lot of, you say, a lot of business savvy and like you say, business maturity of getting to the point of, like I said, the nature of what you do. I mean, like you said, the sense of urgency, it's not like you can say, hey, we're doing a two for one special. On right. <laughs> so where it's just like being, like I said, mature enough to just realize like, hey, here's the reality of our industry. Like, you know, we have there, we don't have the same levers that other people have. It's not like if you were a family, family law, where it's like, someone's like, I, I want to get divorced today. Right. I mean, it's not that case where people are like, well, I want to do my estate planning today. So, you know, how have you found yourself? I mean, you know, the team that you have, how do you find them adjusting to, like I said, that three strike policy and just the, Hey, the fact that, Hey, some people we reach out to, they're not going to go through it. It's, it was odd. You know, everything is just little ticks and turns and we figure something out here and there. The three strikes, ultimately we came up with it as, I like baseball and it's an easy number to remember. And so how to frame it, working with the guys who are doing the intake for me, they know the rules and figuring out we're considering, you know, strike one is when you have your first call with me and you don't move forward. If somebody just reaches out, we'll kind of give them the similar, you know, hey, we haven't heard from you. Are you ready to move forward? But we're not going to really push them too hard. We, we push differently once you've actually kind of raised your hand than, you know, if somebody says, hey, John, I passed your name along. That's different than somebody has scheduled that first call with me. And again, it's just every practice is different. Yeah, like you said, for People who want to get divorced today, you need to be on top of them right now. The the folks who have been injured or the folks who are, you know, unfortunately facing a uh, stint in jail, they have a lot more motivation to be responsive right then versus me. You know, unfortunately, I've got clients, they have draft documents and we're just, you know, we've got their money. We need to get them across the line to sign their documents. Sometimes like, what do we need to do? We're calling them every week. Are you ready to sign now? We've got these documents. Can you please just come in and sign? <laughs> you know, I, I, I do think that like I said that that is a, a very interesting, like I said, the dynamic. So I think figuring out the business side of what you do has had to be an interesting journey. So as you've kind of thought through that, you know, I know you mentioned about the, the small tweaks along the way. Were there any kind of other like resources or like mentors or things that really helped you start making the business clicks on what you do. Right. So I'm sure you've heard this before. Yeah, as a lawyer, I didn't learn how to run a business in law school. I learned how to be a lawyer in law school. But having worked at the Four Seasons, it was really useful for me to be responsible in a business way. So I'd show up at 11 o'clock at night for you know, three out of my four years with the Four Seasons. And I was not only the night manager, I was also the night auditor. So I was doing, you know, running books, uh, making sure everything reconciled, entering banquet tickets, making sure all the receipts from the restaurants and the bars uh, checked out and doing that first cut on the numbers for the day. So learning, oh, 
look, this, this is a business. We've got to run things by certain numbers. We're looking at how things run, seeing you know, in a hotel, there were ebbs and flows. Sure, you kind of knew it, but also seeing, oh, for this hotel, we're a business hotel Sunday night through Thursday night. Fridays and Saturdays, it was a resort style hotel just by the nature of being at the Austin property. But then you'd also see it would dip way down in December and the beginning of January. Travel dropped way off. You'd still have people staying in the hotel, but not as many. And just recognizing there are business cycles that are the just normal ebb and flow of any business, recognizing that and saying, okay, make hay when the sun is shining and be ready to sustain yourself because the normal amount of money, you know, you'd make in the summer and the fall, you've got to have that, those receipts and the funds there to still pay everybody when December's there and you've got like 5% occupancy. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, that, that's the dynamic that I don't know if a lot of people prepare themselves. I mean, just for, for any business is really starting to, like I said, assess your cycle. So, I mean, as a, with the type of firm and the type of practice areas that you provide services in, do you find that there are like trends or seasonality to your business? Oh, definitely. So for me, it's when is the family kind of focused on doing the work? You know, we, we are looking forward to, we're going to do your bit or, you know, business or estate planning. There are big cycles. So I know, and I've learned the major one, things pick back up the week before school starts in the fall. And it'll be busy. October is usually one of my busiest months, uh, not only for clients being focused, but this is kind of right in the middle of everybody planning for things. It starts, you know, flattening as we get into November and it'll take some, you know, dips down in Christmas and the first week of January. Again, once we get back into school time, people are like, oh, the holidays are over. We need to plan for this. And it picks up and it runs until Memorial Day. Memorial Day, it starts dropping, you know, steady off. And then really 4th of July, it drops off from 4th of July again till that second weekend or second week of August. And again, people are on vacation. They're doing other things. So that's when we take our time off. You know, those two times where Christmas and uh, the summer those are the good times for us to do other things, recognizing it's going to be a little slower. It's not going to be completely dead. So my job as the owner is now, well, how do I smooth those out? How can I make sure that people are thinking about us a little bit more during the year? And you know, it's an interesting challenge. Just flatten it out. So it's, it's you know, we're, we're seeing fewer dips. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, and I think that that's a, 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 a you say, an enormous, enormous factor to, to really work through because it's one of those things I thought about even myself. I mean, my background being a CPA now, the interesting thing is like I don't focus on taxation. I focus more on bookkeeping and CFO services. And I remember when I started and talking to a lot of CPAs, and that was one of the things that they said is that, you know, you have massive seasonality. And then right. the rest of the year, you're trying to figure out how do I get more of my revenue to like, pan out to the rest of the year. So hats off to you for, like I said, jumping into that and, and starting to think through and figure that out. And, and speaking of your services, what are the types of services that you and the types of problems you help your clients solve? Yeah. And so this is where I think about, you know, clients don't just come to me or nominally they come to me, they want a will because they've heard I need a will or a trust. The reality is they don't care what kind of document they get, you know, give will or trust or, you know, the singing bush that'll just tell people what to do when they die. They want not a mess when they pass. Uh, like, you know, having done this for over a decade, nobody's ever said whatever, just complete disaster, make sure that happens. They want, you know, whoever's getting stuff, they want them to get it. They don't want there to be fights. They want it to, even if they're leaving somebody out, they don't want to cause problems by leaving them out. They don't want the people who are getting things to have to deal with you know, that person. So it's all about how can we make it easy and how can we look down the road and say, 
all right, eventually everybody's going to die. We're going to know that you're going to have some stuff left. It may be, you know, $20 in a bank account. It may be $20 million spread out across the globe. You're going to have a different level of stuff. We want to think about what does it look like? Who's getting what? And how do we make it easy? So, you know, as an example, got a returning or a client, a family is the returning client, but it's a new family member where in the last year and a half, the pandemic, we're not really sure if a document has been put in front of one this new family member that he didn't intend to sign, but just health issues, pandemic, kind of all of the stuff that's been going on. He may have signed something that he shouldn't have. How do we go through, not only, you know, it's easy enough to clean up the documents, but if there's a family member who may have snuck something in front of him to sign, you know, leaving a disproportionate amount to that family member, how do we not only put one document in place, but how do we stop that person from, you know, unwinding the real intentions of this, of this one new client? And so it's not just a, well, the document's the solution. It's how do we make things easy? So when, when uh, grandma passes, it's easy for everybody. Yeah. Gotcha. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's something that unfortunately people don't really think about that until they have like a, until they hear about a horror story situation or until they've seen it happen, you know, to someone close to them. So, you know, from a, a business owner perspective, I mean, because a lot of our audience are business owners, you know, are, are there any types of, I guess you say, business planning kind of subject matters that come to mind that you say, hey, you know, business owners probably should at least be aware of these type of topics. Right. So this is the same sort of thing. It's what's going to happen when you leave the business. Sure, you own it now, but is this something that when you stop working, whether it's retirement or you're, you know, you go in the ground, what's going to happen and who's going to take over? So it's not just who's going to run the business, but you're also thinking about who's going to own the business. You know, if you own 10 shares of Exxon, something happens to you, you're not worried about installing the next CEO of Exxon. That's but if you own 100% of, you know, for me, Strohmeyer Law, if something happens to me, I've got another attorney who will step in that I've already nominated, they've they've accepted, they'll take over, shut the practice down, and really turn things over to wherever they need to go. So that's level one of just who's going to be in charge. Level two, thinking about, well, are we going to have to buy somebody out? You know, I don't have any partners. But if you're in a business where you have a partner, thinking about, do we need to just buy them out? Are we setting up some sort of company-owned life insurance? Then for, you know, for me as the tax guy, you as the, uh, you're not practicing in tax compliance anymore, but just knowing that, um, you know, here's the big thing. Life insurance owned by the company has to be reported to the IRS. You're not paying tax on it, but there is a form for it. And there are other forms that go with it that a lot of times when I bring this up to business owners, they say, wait a minute, we have to be filing what? And, you know, even, even for me, I own 100% of my LLC and it's taxed as an S corporation. If I had business owned life insurance, I would have to sign a waiver and a consent to the company getting life insurance on me. And if I have to do that as a sole owner, yes, you know, I assure you, whatever business structure you're in, you need to make sure that you've got those consents in place. Why? That's the way the rules are written. Just deal with whatever they've they've asked for from you and just get it done. No, I love it. I love it. I mean, and, and it's always things like that that I think people use like, you don't know what you don't know. Um, right. So it's always great to have, you know, insight like that. So, you know, if people are interested in learning more about you, and learning more about your firm, and then also um, just the different exciting things you have going on. Where can people find you? Yeah. So obviously for my law firm, strohmeyerlaw.com. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, number two, I'm on Twitter, sometimes more active than others, but I got in early, so I get to be John the Lawyer on Twitter. And finally, I do have a podcast on client service lessons. What I learned from when I was in the hotel, applying it to you know, 
primarily lawyers, but a lot of the lessons apply to doctors, CPAs, accountants, barbers, gardeners, whatever it is, if people are hiring you to do a job that's not entertainment, pampering, and fun, there are some lessons about how to bring what the Four Seasons taught me to your job so you're taking better care of your clients. And that's Five Star Council. Obviously, you've got the link right there to episode 66. It's a good starting point to get my overview of what I think about things and a good jumping off point for the, all the interviews we have. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one question I always love asking every guest when they come on and and, and you can definitely, you can reiterate something you've already said, or it can be something new is what are two pieces of insight that you would call the audience's attention to when it comes to, hey, I'm speaking to business owners. What are two things I want you guys to keep in mind? So two things, I'm going to come at it from kind of the both sides that I've talked about. As the attorney and the planner, we're thinking through what messes are you possibly creating? Even if you don't intend to, what are the messes that are lurking in your plan as it stands right now? Because if you know what those messes are going to be down the line, it's a lot easier to avoid them by dealing with it right now. On the other side, client service coming from the hotel. The biggest mistake I see people making is thinking, look, I'm a I'm a lawyer. I need to have some over-the-top experience. I'm competing with Disney and Four Seasons and the Savannah Bananas and whoever else. You're not. Those companies are all about entertainment, pampering, and fun. And when it comes to professionals, whether it's doctors, lawyers, CPAs, engineers, people are hiring us to move the needle for them. And so we need to be focused on that. And so when you do that, it means you're not necessarily spending money on some over-the-top experience unless it contributes to people actually achieving whatever result. So for me, going out and spending money on custom bar, you know, custom drink menu for the for the law firm, clients don't really care about that. Sure, do they want a nice experience? We want to be focused on moving the needle on making their plans easy to uh, deal with and getting things lined up for them. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, John, it has been a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for being an amazing guest. Oh, Terrell, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for tuning into another episode of the Law and Finance Show, where we talk about the finance and the business side of running a law firm. Now, if you know another law firm, don't be selfish. Make sure you tell them about this show and hit that subscribe button so you get updates whenever we release a new episode.